So, so you know, when you look at observations of sun, it shows these outer layers of sun. Um, this is something that you can observe directly. And in the simulation, it simulates these features, uh, maybe minus the chromosphere. Uh, maybe if I put some kind of filter it all, but uh, I don't know the program well enough to do that. <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna select the sun. Um, so the sun is that way. Let me just uh, center that. And uh, that's our view of the sun. And let me be a little bit realistic. And instead of going to the sun as we can in this software, let me just zoom in. Uh, I can actually zoom in here. Like um, I'm looking at the sun through a telescope or some kind of magnifying apparatus. And uh, when I do that, this is, um, so this is an image of the sun that you might, uh, be able to make in a telescope that's been that's designed to look at the sun. Um, so, by the way, be careful whenever you're observing the sun. Uh, you have to take necessary precautions. You have to filter the, the very bright light of the sun. And um, when you've done that, so you do see these. Um, so this is not artifact. Um, in this software, I've actually turned off a lot of the um, the uh, optical artifacts, because um, you know, in optics, there might be glare, there might be diffraction spikes. I turned those off because uh, there could be lens flare. <laughs> I turned those off because um, you know, optical artifacts, while they produce beautiful pictures, it's not, it doesn't relate to physics. So I turn them off. Um, Assume you have perfect optics that don't show this effect. So these are not optical effects. They are actual part of the sun. And uh, if you look, uh, let me do this side by side. So going to window mode here. Um, so if you look at the slides, this is, so those features are what uh, shown in your lecture slides as uh, Corona. It, and um, I guess I don't, I have a friend uh, uh, who went to, I think he went to Oregon to observe the solar eclipse. Last time it happened in continental US, I think in 2017, 2018. Um, so I'm sure he has um, personal experience of seeing the corona. Uh, I don't, um, this is a colorized image as it says it's in x-ray. I don't know if visually if this is how it would appear. It might be. <laughs> um, and let me zoom in a little bit further. I think at some level of zoom, yeah, you can begin to see the sunspots. I think for whatever reason, the simulation is simulating the sun uh, with fewer sunspots than usual. Uh, I guess that's fine. So what it's showing is you see those um, large easy black dots on the surface of the sun. That's the sunspots on the photosphere. I think I, even Galileo was able to see that with his telescope. Uh, I don't know how he arranged it. Um, so by the, the, for amateur uh, astronomers, the way you are recommended to observe the sun using a telescope is by projecting it onto a surface and look at the image projected onto a surface. Don't look through the telescope at the sun. You will destroy your eye. So, um, so, so this is uh, something that um, sunspots are something that's easily seen on the sun. Now, when you observe the sun more carefully, you see additional features that are programmed into this simulation. So when you zoom in farther at high enough zoom where you can see sunspots in the large scale is something that looks like this. This is the granulation pattern. It's a, it's quite fascinating. Uh, let me see if I can navigate to around one of the sunspots. Uh, where are my sunspots? Ah, there it is. So um, if they look a little bit different around the sunspot, um, but they also exist around the sunspot. And, um, and the slides cover that from your textbook, let me, See here, it's gonna be 
at the uh, photosphere. Yeah. So these are the features that we see in the photosphere. It's the uh, cold granulation, and they show uh, these cells. It's a uh, so it's explained in some way within our standard solar model. And um, one of the reasons science is so successful and reliable is, so with the models and theories, we can be wrong. <laughs> Sometimes we think things work one way and then we figure out it doesn't, you know, geocentrism versus heliocentrism. And maybe some of the things that we will talk about later about dark matter and dark energy, maybe it'll turn out to be wrong. But what won't be wrong ever are these direct observations. If some new, better model of the sun comes along, that new, better model still has to explain these features. So, so that's why I'm trying to be careful in separating what are observational features of the sun as laid out in these slides and what are the uh, model explanation of these observational features. So, um, so when you look through the standard solar model, the thing that explains that granulation pattern is this. Um, so th it's this model of the inner layers of the sun. And in our model, uh, we expect there to be a convection zone uh, in the outer layers. And I think the slides do explicitly mention it. Uh, yeah, so maybe there's more. Yeah, uh, let me leave it here. So in this convection show, so the granulation patterns that you see, uh, this is thought to be um, thought to be from oh, let me just um, thought to be from that uh, convection current. So the hotter spots, uh, hot, the brighter, hotter portions would be uh, part where the, the hotter gas from the inside of the sun is rising up. And these outer, cooler, darker regions would be where the, uh, the cooler, relatively speaking, cooler uh, gas is now sinking. So that convection cells in the convection layer is what explains this granulation pattern. So, so that's the observation of the sun. And I think that's all that's programmed into this. I was trying to um, run this simulation for a bit and let me center it here. Do I need to follow it? Um, and when I was trying it out, um, like advancing the time and just looking to see whether it'll show. Um, I mean, I'm pretty sure it correctly, um, yeah, sun is rotating probably one full turn over the course of a few days. So I think it's uh, simulating the rotation rate of the sun correctly but it doesn't show any dynamical features. I mean, okay, so the corona is changing a little bit, but all those sunspots look all the same. So, so you know, this simulation, it's uh, not a physics simulator. It, the only physics they simulate are orbital mechanics, gravitational interaction between bodies. It's pretty easy to simulate, but it's not meant to or designed to simulate solar dynamics. So, so I think where I would end this uh, observation of our sun is, by showing you this link uh, with link to the um, link to a video that I borrowed this background image from, when you look at the very first slide, the cover image here, it comes from a time lapse video from Solar Dynamics Observatory. This is a live link. You can click to it to get there. You will see it. Um, it's uh, from NASA people somewhere, I think. <laughs> so it's a decade of the sun, every second is a day. And I think uh, um, if you look at the description, you can figure out what colors represent. This is, this is some um, sort of a filtered view. It's not um, meant to be taken as a literal view of how the sun appears if you just looked at it with the naked eyes. But um, yeah, this is how sun rotates and all the dynamical things. I think these are the prominences that's mentioned in uh, being held up in the uh, chromosphere, I think, <laughs> from features of the sun. 
um, yeah, so it, and um, it, sorry, I don't know, someone did bump the telescope. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, uh, it shows the uh, dynamical thing in the sun. Um, and yeah, and so the simulation that we are working, with, it's not designed to simulate that, to that uh, and this is not a simulation, that's an actual observation. And, um, and whoever may be building actual simulation of the sun, I'm sure this is one of the real observations that they would uh, use to compare to see if, uh, um, uh, so if a simulation is producing reasonable results. So, yeah. So <laughs> that's a whole hour <laughs> for a decade of the sun. Every second is a day. Um, so, so yeah, you can take a look at that. I, I think for me, uh, taking that image, I think I uh, found the uh, time period when it was a solar maximum and just uh, found the image with the most number of sunspots and most uh, bright features. <laughs> so, yeah, but, but sun is a very dynamical, um, you know, way uh, more so than what is the oh that might have been I think that was a that must have been okay um I think that was the 2017 20 okay oh uh, no, no no the date is different so I think it's some kind of solar eclipse but um maybe I don't know Uh, uh, let me move on. <laughs> I, I don't know exactly what that was. Me nineteen. Okay. Oh, some kind of a transit. Maybe there was a solar eclipse. Uh, <laughs> it's like a single frame. If you want to see, you have to download it and or do it frame by frame. Um, so so yeah, that's uh, that's our observation of the sun, and I, I guess uh, as we look at. Uh, as I'm going to look at the uh, nearby stars, the disclaimer I have to give is um, the only star that we have been able to observe to the detail that we have to this degree is only our sun. We have not seen corona of any other star. We have not been able to observe any visible layers of other stars. We do get spectrum from other stars that gives us a lot of information. But um, so what you will see in the simulation is um, what people expect other stars will be, will look like um, based on our direct observation of our own sun and the models we have of it. And the benefit of the model is that it's a calculational tool with adjustable parameters. When we have a different star that's not quite the same as our sun, we can change those parameters and see uh, how some key aspects will be different. 